Yeah, this system right here is a communicating system. It's not like your typical legacy system. It uses an inverter, like um, a sort of a VFD, variable frequency drive. So it's wired in differently than what we would typically call legacy. We come to find what's going on with this system is, it requires a four control wire hookup, and it only has two. So what they're doing is using a traditional 18-2 control wire setup, and they've got a transformer on it, giving it the other 24 volts that it needs. Problem with that is the transformer is going to continually give the unit 24 volts. Now at this point in time, I don't know this yet. I'm just, I'm still troubleshooting. So at this point, everything's checking out. Everything's checking out how it's supposed to. I got a lot of bad camera angles. I'm an AC tech, not a photographer. And to be honest, communication is probably the wave of the future. Well, it's not the wave of the future. In most cases, it's already here, to be honest. It's just in your higher end units, that's all. But I got a strong feeling that in the near future, it's going to become the standard. I mean, it fits right in with all the advancements they're making with the smart homes and things of that nature. So at this point, I'm racking my brain, not knowing that the answer's right in front of my face. I say right in front of my face, I'm looking dead at a transformer, the one thing that's not supposed to be there. This is one of them times where I had to just step back, take a look at it, and gather my thoughts. I mean, you know the old saying, hindsight is definitely 2020. I'm glad I get to look back at this old footage as a learning experience. I mean, and sometimes you even gotta walk away to get your mind right, right quick. So the customer complaint was that the unit was making loud noises. And that's because due to the transformer constantly giving the unit 24 volts of power, even when it wanted to turn off, it couldn't. Keep in mind, I'm telling you all of this in hindsight. Now, of course I fixed it, but at this point in time, I was just confused. That's not a problem. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes you walk up right to it, diagnose it on the spot. Sometimes you might be confused with something that's like right in your face. And at this point, it's a good time to rewind and get more in depth about what a communicating system is. So this can be used with some two-stage and all variable capacity HVAC systems. It requires a four-wire setup, two power wires for heating and cooling, and two for communication between the components. And when communicating equipment is installed, the thermostat searches for the components in similar fashion to how your smartphone searches for a Bluetooth speaker you want it to pair with. And once the thermostat and components are paired, the components communicate to the thermostat what their capabilities are in terms of heating and cooling capacity, and for the blower motors, how much air they can move through the system, which allows the thermostat to set up optimal performance. So each component has an electrical address, so the thermostat knows where the data is coming from and can send data back to that component and control its operation. And a computerized serial network allows each component to send ongoing performance data that refines performance. Indoor and outdoor sensors allow the thermostat control to determine and communicate exactly how much heating or cooling, dehumidification or humidification, 
and airflow are required to keep the home optimally comfortable. So we throw these on here. Yeah, that's not peak heat. <laughs> At this point, I'm I'm yeah. checking everything. I'm breaking the small probes out. I'm doing everything. I'm still trying to find out where they can put sub cooling is perfect. The super sub cooling right here. It's got to be ten plus or minus three. I'm finding out here that even the sub cooling is right. It's a THV, so that's why I'm I'm leaning on sub cooling. It's perfect. So I gotta take a picture of the sub cooling, of course. Rest of minus three, and here's a sub cool. If you had a piston, we do super heat, but you got TXV, like we said. Yeah. So we're going to sub cool in. I was taking pictures of this before I realized how intricate these programs are these days. When they, I knew that they would uh, communicate with each other, and you would actually just Load the reading I'm zone right there onto your phone, right there from your phone. I don't know if I said this at first or not, but this footage is about three, four years old, so at the time a lot of this wasn't known to me. It was newer technology. I was more of the uh, manifold, analog manifold gauges. And not that the digital gauges was new, but the smart, the smart probes aspect of it was new to me. Honestly, the smart probes opens up a whole nother avenue of how good of a technician you could be everything i'm writing in by hand these small probes actually will log it in create a pdf that can be printed out and given to the customer and it's great for you to have for your records so you can track the system and the system performance over time and not only that it increases the speed and efficiency of troubleshooting so now I'm trying to check out everything that could cause this system to just shut down. Like, it's not over amping. It's uh, super heat and sub cooling. I mean, it's, excuse me, sub cooling properly. It means it's not a low pressure switch, high pressure switch. So right now we're still just digging into the system. And honestly, at this time I was just completely baffled. Everything's checking out. Now I'm thinking as I'm listening to the customer talk, because sometimes if you pay close enough attention, they'll diagnose the unit they set themselves. And he's got an infinity thermostat, an infinity thermostat, excuse me. So what, it, what it's doing is it'll, it'll tell him it's kind of what the malfunction is to a it's certain comes, extent. So this is this is just low voltage. High voltage is down here. So you have two forty here. Well, yeah, I don't remember. I think I sent you a picture of the air. See look. This will be low voltage. Yeah. So if it's telling you a low voltage one, that's between this board right here, this Make 
comfort maker. So like I was saying, the thermostat will kind of, to a certain extent, diagnose the problem for you. So what his thermostat was, was telling him was low voltage warnings. So now I'm leaning closer and closer to understanding that how they have it wired is the transformer is wired into the high voltage side, which is supply, which is the supplying the transformer with the 240. And then they're taking the 24 volts that the transformer is stepping down to and wiring it on to the control side of the system, which they're not supposed, not supposed to go like that. What it's supposed to be is a four wire setup from the beginning. Right. That doesn't. So they make so now that so. Oh no! No no. Oh no! This call this call man. We'll come. We'll make sure the day doesn't go. All right. So look. So we'll go to. The only other thing that gives you 240 off of here would be this transformer. Yeah. This thing's not, you know, I mean, it's working perfectly. Right? Well, it appears to be. Let's see if this transformer is going to give me. Yeah, normally it's, it's so quiet, you can't, you can't really hear it inside. Well, I don't know. The tra th this here, huh? No, we're not even using that leg. Yeah, so right now, I'm getting warmer. I'm getting warmer. Not all the way there yet, but I'm getting warmer. We know, and it's not the free iron. We know we're getting power, but we're not understanding yet that, that the power is part of the problem. As a matter of fact, the power is the problem. It's the source of the 24 voltage that's creating this whole problem. So what's happening is, even when the unit is going to turn off since there's a transformer in there that's wired into the 240 volts on the bottom side of the contactor it's constantly giving 24 volts and it's skipping over the communication process so in essence what he has is legacy wiring on a communication system so when the communication side is telling it to shut off the 24 volts that's constantly powering the contactor is telling it to do something completely different yeah, you got it. And it's, it's like, so you get the new tool so you can actually see. So when somebody says... Well, it's like doing electric, but it works without a good meter. Yep, 
You can see half of what you can see. So what we did is we went back and we ran a four wire setup, fixed everything. 